I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. This is Dabu 7, August 26, 2013. And you can hear the war drums beating in the air as Obama and company are hell-bent on attempting to provoke Russia in a World War III here. What has happened, though, is one of the top guys, and this is big news here because they are admitting the use of chemical attacks by the rebels. This is one of the former top guys of the Al-Nusra unit that they have over there. And he would made a statement in a tweet that if it wasn't for confidentiality, he would reveal the name of the fighter that made all those chemicals. So this is proof, this is huge. Because this is them admitting that they have made and have used chemical weapons. This is it. I mean, he just he's, he's admitting it right there. So what we have is the beast uh, trying to say that Assad, which is one of the very few countries on this planet that is not dictated by the Illuminati in the Western world, and will not submit to him that Assad attacked his own people while the whole world sitting here watching him. And they're going to bypass the UN. They're going to form their own little NATO coalition. And it's going to be Britain, France, and the United States, and Turkey uh, all going in. you got Jordan. I'm going to do a video here later covering both sides of this war and how it could potentially play out. Now, what you've got, though, is an attack that has just happened on one of the Syrian state's main media sources, one of the main media outlets, and it was taken down for two days uh, after these chemical attacks. So, during this time, they're trying to recover from this crippling attack to their system and they get back up and running they make the statements they tell everybody well that gives the, that buys the US and others more time to say uh, you know what why did you stall you know it's a little too late why didn't you let the UN inspectors in there well they weren't going to let the UN inspectors in there for their own safety and security not knowing what was going on uh, I mean the, the country's at war and then they're getting attacked and hacked. Um, so they said, yeah, we want you in here. We want you to come see this and check this out. 100%. We didn't do it. They're in there. And they go to making their way to the place. And mortars and rockets start raining down. And snipers start shooting the UN vehicles. So bad that they almost disabled it. They had to take it back to a checkpoint and switch it out. Now, a lot of people were saying, all right, now they're leaving. You, the UN inspectors are leaving. They're gone. And once they get out of here, that's when the bomb's going to drop. Well, they went back and they got another vehicle, and they're going to the spot. But they're going into a territory that is controlled by the rebel groups, and you've got the Assad army trying to work their way into this area and secure it so these people can check out the situation. If the attacks keep coming, it is the rebels, uh, their terror squads, and they're sniping them and they're trying to drive them out of there. Just like they did the chemical attack. The rebels did the chemical attack and they're trying to use it as a false flag, obviously, to go in and murder Assad and all these innocent people in Syria. And that is the truth. And I know sometimes it hurts. But the real deal here is that you, Russia has warned the United States. Russia's warned Israel. 
Iran has warned Israel. Syria has warned Israel. And the United States has warned Syria. So, what I expect to see happen here is another attack. I'm talking a, a, a significant attack. If these UN inspectors get in, who knows? Some may even get very close to an attack in this region, uh, if not too close. And if that happens, um, and they go running out of the country, as far as I last checked here, I don't have the link up on the screen now, but it looked like all all the flights, commercial flights and other flights, off this one, one site showed that there was no um, flights occurring over Syria. So Turkey's playing a huge role in this too. Okay, and they're on the front lines here, and they're taking in a lot of the people that are trying to run out of Syria. That's going to mess with their own country and its culture with the different Islamic uh, groups that they have there, especially in the southern tip of the country by Syria. Now, Turkey's got the second largest army in the UN but behind the United States but in this NATO coalition. And the only people from Europe that are coming is the UK, well, Britain and France. They've got the military muscle, and might, and the money, and the, and the bloodline. And that's what they're doing. So, in the end, this is what Damascus looks like right now. Look at this. And that says it all, doesn't it? This is what the Obama administration wants. This is what Beirut looks like. This is what Baghdad looks like. This is what Cairo looks like right now. And you're looking at Damascus. And the sad part about it is most of these places, most of these cities will never recover. The city is in ruins. Every building would have to be knocked down. Eyes open, folks. I'll leave links as always. Eyes open.